Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of F. W. de Klerk The policy of appetite in South Africa had come and gone. Hated by the majority blacks for depriving them of basic human rights in their own native country. Protected by the minority white because it guaranteed them political power, privileges and control. But one man who had previously championed and defended it played a crucial role in dismantling AIDS for the sake of national peace and unity. That man is Frederick Willem de Klerk, the president who extinguished the flame of systemic appetite in South Africa. De Klerk was born on the 18th of March 1936 in Johannesburg. He was the second son of his parents, Johannes Jan de Klerk and Hendrina Cornelia Kotzer. His family were quite influential and had strong affiliations with South Africa's National Party. His paternal great-grandfather, Jan Van Roy, had served as a senator. His own father as well was a senator and served as president of the Senate for seven years. His aunt's husband, J.G. Strijdom, was prime minister at a time. De Klerk evidently was exposed to politics from his childhood. He was 12 years old when the appetite system officially began by the minority white government of South Africa. His father was one of its originators, so he grew up with the concept of appetite. The de Klerk's family moved a lot during his childhood and he changed school seven times over seven years. He finally went to a boarding school at the Monument High School in Kruger's Dorp graduating in 1953 with a first-class pass. In all, de Klerk had a very comfortable and secure childhood. Between 1954 and 1958, he attended Pochefstroom University, obtaining both a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Law. At the university, he befriended Marike Willems, the daughter of a professor at the University of Pretoria, and married her in 1959. He was 23 while his wife was 22. In 1962, de Klerk established his own law partnership in Verenigen, Transvaal, and built it into a successful business within 10 years. With his family's rich history in politics, it was not a surprise when in 1972, de Klerk began his own political journey. That year, his alma mater offered him a chair in its law faculty and within days of accepting it, members of the National Party approached him and requested him to stand for the party at Verenigen. De Klerk won the ensuing elections and in November, he was elected to the House of Assembly. In the House, he built a reputation as a formidable debater. As a member of various groups in the parliament, De Klerk made several foreign visits to Germany, Israel, the United Kingdom, and the United States. In 1976, he claimed racism was even more pervasive in the US from his observation than in South Africa. In April 1978, De Klerk became Minister of Social Welfare and Pensions. He also served as Minister of Post, Telecommunication, and of mining. When he was education minister between 1984 and 1989, he actively upheld the appetite system in schools in South Africa. For most of his political career, the clerk was seen as highly conservative and was considered someone who would oppose change. He was a very forceful proponent of system of appetite and white minority interests. President P. W. Botha suffered a stroke and was forced to resign as leader of the National Party. De Klerk became party leader after defeating Botha's preferred successor, Baron Duplessis, in February 1989. Soon after, he called for a new constitution that would give more concessions to non-white racial groups. 
he made a trip to the UK where Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher urged him to release Nelson Mandela. The clerk was named acting state president when Botha resigned on the 14th of August. He was later elected president on the 20th of September 1989. Many black South Africans regarded the clerk as no different from previous leaders who pursued appetite. Archbishop Desmond Tutu shared this assessment, stating, I don't think we've got to even begin to pretend that there is any reason for thinking that we are entering a new phase. It is just musical chairs. The clerk, however, surprised everyone when he resisted pressure from security chiefs to ban a planned protest in Cape Town by Tutu and Alan Bosak, allowing the march to hold. He said, The door to a new South Africa is open. It is not necessary to batter it down. About 30,000 participated in the march, which was replicated in other cities without government disturbance. South Africa had begun to experience change, championed by one who they didn't give a chance to begin with. It became clear that indeed it was the beginning of a new dawn in South Africa when he personally agreed to have a private meeting with Tutu, Bosad, and Frank Chikane. He also released a number of elderly anti appetite activists who had been imprisoned, like Walter Sisulu. In December, he visited Mandela in prison and spent time discussing the possibility of moving away from white minority rule. In February 1990, he addressed the parliament and in his speech said, History has placed a tremendous responsibility on the shoulders of this country's leadership, namely the responsibility of moving our country away from the current course of conflict and confrontation. The hopes of millions of South Africans is fixed on us. The future of Southern Africa depends on us. We dare not waver or fail. When the clerk was actually taking steps to dismantle appetite for many black South Africans, it was too good to be true, so they felt it was all gimmicks. You wouldn't blame them. This man was a champion of the policy he now claimed to want to end. But Tutu believed him, saying, It is incredible. Give him credit. Give him credit. I do. Nine days after his speech, on the 11th of February, the clerk made history by releasing Nelson Mandela from prison. Negotiations continued all through his presidency between the ruling National Party and the African National Congress, ANC. After Appetite was officially dismantled, the clerk and Nelson Mandela both got the joint Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts in ending Appetite. When Mandela was elected president in 1994, the clerk whose party came second in the elections became deputy president in the government of national unity under Nelson Mandela. He remained in that post until 1996. In 1997, he resigned as the leader of the National Party and retired from politics. In 2000, De Klerk founded the Pro-Peace FW De Klerk Foundation. He is also the chairman of the Global Leadership Foundation, which seeks to prevent and resolve conflict through mediation, support democratic leadership, and promote good governance. He and his wife Marike had three children together. Theirs was far from a perfect marriage as in 1999, they divorced after 38 years of marriage following the discovery of his affair with Elita Georgiadis. He married Elita afterwards. Tragedy struck on the 3rd of December 2001 when Marike de Klerk was found stabbed and strangled to death in her Cape Town home. De Klerk, who was away in Stockholm, Sweden, cut short his trip immediately and returned to mourn his ex-wife. Though De Klerk and Mandela had a strained working relationship while he served as deputy president to Mandela, he later spoke fondly of Mandela. 
Though he is hailed by many across South Africa, many white elements were not happy with his efforts to end apartheid, saying he betrayed white interests. This proves true the saying that you cannot please everybody, but it is undeniable that the clerk gained far more admirers than enemies for the change he championed. What have we missed out of this biography of the clerk? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.